Are you ready? It is time for serious talk with a sense of humor. It is time for KMB Talk. Thank you, everyone, for joining another episode of KMB Talk. We'll look at us. We are lucky today. We got Kelly Fox back in the studio so quick, this time as a co-host. Kelly, how are you? I'm very well, Kerry. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. You know, with the for those that are watching or listening, we're in the Pacific Northwest and uh, doing battle with this winter storm. I wasn't sure you would make it. <laughs> I wasn't sure I was going to either, but you I, found a way. I wasn't sure I was going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, it's good to have you back. Uh, very exciting guest for today's call. Yes. Very exciting. We've had a few moments to chat with her before. And everyone, you know, I always like to say that someone's response to a question or a statement depends upon their unique perspective, right? So, therefore, it's possible for multiple perspectives to simultaneously exist. And what I find so, so interesting about that is if you mention, as an example, ACDC, big rock band, right? You mentioned Guns N' Roses, big rock band. Go out in the community, ask somebody, what do you think about ACDC? What do you think about Guns N' Roses? And they're going to speak about you know whether or not they were a fan, whether or not they like rock music, things of that nature. The guest we have today was the one that at one point was responsible for putting on those productions. You're talking 50 plus thousand people in attendance. Wow. 50,000 plus people in attendance. So we are absolutely so excited to have Eugenia Gorkova on the phone with us today. Eugenia, how are you? Gary, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. So you're in the British Columbia, Vancouver area, and so you're you're being minimally or, or affected by the storm. But considering that you've spent time in in Winnipeg, uh, this is this is nothing for you. That is correct. Yeah, it's uh, it's compared to what I used to. Yeah, this is nothing for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was telling. I'm walking through it like a champ. <laughs> I was telling Kelly about the, uh, you know, the internet guy uh, driving the van down the street and the only vehicle on the road. And unfortunately, I've got, I have three Labrador dogs and unfortunately one got sick. And uh, trying to track down a vet was difficult these last few days. Now, thankfully, the, the dog is fine. Uh, Miss Emma, you know, they're part of your family. So she's good, but. Oh, good to hear. Good th to hear. Thank you. But the, the vet, uh, the one that actually, she was so polite but she was on her cell phone and she says, look, I've got 20 inches of snow and I'm in a Honda Civic and I live on a hill. There's no way I can make it to the clinic. Let's diagnose this over the phone. Talk about customer experience, client experience, and Eugenia, that is right up your alley. That is correct, yes. So when I look at your background, I see born in Russia. I see raised in Germany. I see a lot of time in uh North America and Canada specifically, and really, I mean, good gosh, you've got some some heavy hitting skills in the testimonials. You know, we're talking NHL coaches and massive tour production managers that are just ready to say Eugenia is the the best thing out since sliced bread. And here, so it seems like your career's oh, just thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you. It seems like your career's doing so great. Seven months. Yeah, I had uh, quite a good piece, yeah, and uh, working on the production. Yeah, so I've been in the entertainment industry now for over 10 years, and okay. I started working in Winnipeg at the uh, Bell MTS Center. It used to be MTS Center, but now it's uh, the Bell MTS Center, and that's where the Winnipeg Jets play. Winnipeg and Jets. Wow. Winnipeg Jets, fantastic team. I'm a big fan. What, is, say. what is the craziest thing you've seen at a hockey game? I mean, uh, it was not the craziest, but I would say the exciting. That was the opener when we bought them back, and we had the first game. The energy in the building, I felt the build, the building was shaking oh. because the fans were so excited, and the energy was there, just incredible, absolutely incredible. It's something you cannot share in words. It's wow. something you got to experience, right? So that was probably when it comes to hockey hockey that was uh for me the most memorable day 
So you're talking about it. Say, yeah. You're talking about a stadium where you can feel the pulse. Absolutely. L- literally yeah. not yeah. O- literally not only in the air but actually, you know, in the ground. The foundation is shaking. Wow. Yeah, well, we had uh, 15,000 fans in there and every single seat was sold and there's still a huge lineup for uh, buying tickets and having season tickets, right? So and imagine all those people just absolutely sharing their excitement uh, inside the building. And it was just something incredible. It almost brings tears to your eyes because it was just something something else. Mm-hmm. Now, that, that has to be a difficult feeling to walk away from. It has to be. It was. It was really difficult. Um, so what I've done for the Jets is I was uh, translating for the Russian players. So if we had any players in, I would translate for them in, in Russian because most of the players, uh, when they come from Russia, they, uh, they're they not familiar with the English uh, language. So right. I would translate for them in the media. But okay. uh, mostly I was on the event side, um, uh, concerts and, and galas and private functions. So I was doing that. And then... Uh, time came where um, I decided to move to Vancouver, okay. and I always wanted to come to Vancouver because I'm not quite big on the snow and the cold for six months. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer the ocean. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. Ke- Kelly, have you spent any time in Vancouver? Uh, I have, yeah. I love it up there. Okay, so I was in Vancouver when I was 18 years old. I went to a rave in Vancouver. Okay. Uh, let's not talk about that, but <laughs> what an experience. What a beautiful city. I remember it uh, at the time I was, so I'm from Texas originally, and I remember speaking to family members, and I, I, I specifically remember saying it was one of the cleanest cities that I have visited yet. Mm-hmm. Really, yes, really. Yes, it is, it is pretty beautiful, absolutely stunning. It's, you walk on the street and and. You see the mountains and just a few steps from where I live, it's the water. And just to go there for a walk and see the beauty, it's, it's absolutely outstanding. Oh, when, yeah. you, when you have some travel coming up and you need someone to, to babysit the home, let us know. We'll, <laughs> we'll get out the passport. You got it, Carrie Kelly team. Oh, we'll, I got gotcha. you. We'll, we'll pull out the passports and, and cross the border and make our <laughs> way up. Fantastic. Well, so let, let's really let's transition to what a story, what a background. You definitely have some travel in there. But now, EG Event Productions, if I'm correct, you founded this about seven months ago. That is correct, yeah. So uh, just going back to the stadium. So I worked at the stadium for uh, four and a half years. Okay. Um, engineering large-scale events. Uh, as you mentioned, ACDC, Guns N' Roses, and uh, FIFA, FIFA World Cup, like really, really incredible wow. big production wow. events. Yes. And uh, one day I uh, I decided, you know, I want to branch out on my own. And uh, the reason for that was I had many interactions with people in Vancouver. And okay. when they said, I'm going to a gala, or I'm going to an event. There was never, um, I never felt that excitement. Oh. Never felt that excitement where, oh my God, I'm going to this gala. Or, wow, like, can you imagine I'm going to this event? This excitement was not there. And uh, thinking about it, how can I change that? And that's where um, I uh, came up with my uh, with my business and said, you know, I want to change that perception. I want to get that excitement uh, to companies and 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 firms, you know, and uh, yeah, and that's how uh, EG Event Production started. Oh, you know, Kelly and I spend quite a bit of time talking about business, and uh, <clears throat> Kelly, talk about looking at opportunity right in front of you. Mm-hmm. So here you are, you're in this role, production, ma- NHL games, yeah. massive shows. When you turn it all off, and you go home, and you go out into your community, and you're speaking to your peers, and you're speaking to your colleagues. They're saying, oh, I've got to go to this gala. I've got this this work event coming up. There's no enthusiasm. We all hear that. Eugenia hears it. Light bulb goes off. Yeah, pretty remarkable to catch that light bulb or to see that because for me, the user experience or the customer experience, we all kind of talk about it, but 
I've never thought about it in terms of a gala event. I certainly can think about it when I go to a concert. I can think about it when I, you know, go do something exotic or something that's beyond my norm. Right. But these galas and business events, we all go to these things all the time. Sometimes and it just, it, sometimes it, it almost seems like a, like a pain. It's sometimes. just part of the job. You chalk it up as the, the good with the bad. And sometimes they're not always bad, but I just do it because it's a function that I have to be at. But now we have Eugenia mm-hmm. out there and she's changing this. Yes. She's changing. So Eugenia, how do you, let's start there. So the light bulb goes off and you say, there's an opportunity out here. These events are happening regardless, but I see an opportunity. I am so mm-hmm. curious did, did it take you that long to get up some courage to do a startup? Uh, you know, Carrie, I wanted to actually to do that for quite some time. I played with that thought, but uh, last year was kind of the time uh, where it was right for me. Perfect. And I just, I just felt ready, uh, you know. Um, I think everybody needs to grow to a certain point where they take the next step in their life. It's like a ladder in life, right? You step right. Uh, a le- uh, step by step, and whenever you're ready for it. And uh, what what holds a lot of people back, uh, in my opinion, is the fear. The fear of oh, unknown, gosh. right? Is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Right? But if you don't try, you don't know. It's better to sit there with the thought and say, you know what, I tried, then then uh not trying but what if you try right and, and it, it it goes very well for you and uh, i like to take risks and you know and i said you know what i will try that and see uh, how it goes and so far so good wow you know the gosh fear i mean kelly and i just <laughs> both looked at one another i mean that word comes up so often not publicly as much as i think it should honestly but it definitely comes up in these private dialogues. Reminds me when I, I received a phone call uh, for a job offer in Hawaii, and I had never been. I was a, a, you know, a young father, and I remember contemplating the offer, and it occurred to me I would rather go, fail, dislike it, and have to work literally just to come back home than I would to think about it and years down the road have regrets. And Eugenia, Absolutely. you just stated, you know, almost the same thing it is it's time to go. You just know, but you have to get over that fear. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the fear, what, what is really fear, right? People, the fear is the unknown because uh, people just don't know what's going to happen. And that's the right. feeling what bothers them, right? That's basically what, what it translates to is the right. fear is, is equals unknown, uh, if you would have known how how this is gonna go for you, you wouldn't have that feeling, right? So right. and but yeah, I, I always say you gotta grow in life and risk it and do it. If you're something really really passionate about, go for it because you will you will get to the point where you have all those incredible people around you who are supporting you who are guiding you and they just come out of nowhere, you know, and, and that's the incredible thing about that is once you take that step is you get all that great energy right into your project. <laughs> I have a quick question. Mm-hmm. Did you, have you always had the passion for event planning or things of this nature? I know that uh, my passion in life is around retail and building materials and, and, and people related to those things more than anything else. I've always known the people part of it, but I never knew, the other two have you always known what where you wanted to go or how you want you know to kelly develop? i was standing i was standing in school one day and uh we um we had a group of people and we always met at the same spot in school that was our spot and i was in the seventh grade and i remember we were standing <laughs> under that tree <laughs> and people we were just kind of talking what everybody wants to do when they're in school and i always said i want to plan events and everybody started laughing they're like, good luck. And I said, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, something tells me you you were also planning things around the tree as well, right? So we, <laughs> er, everyone, we need to be here at the tree at this time. Uh, that's right. Kelly, you bring the but water I, I and, the, and the candy. <laughs> Seventh grade. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And I always wanted to do that. But at that point in my life, I was obviously uh, young. And, and when you it, – it's – quite dif- difficult but it's absolutely doable to get into that industry because you have to prove yourself that you can do it and right and you know and 
And uh, yeah, so that's how it's kind of once I moved to Winnipeg, um, I started working as an usher just to get my foot into the door. Right. And sometimes, you know, you have just to do uh, to do things to get into the door to get noticed. Uh, in order for you then to move up because that's when you can prove yourself and, and work towards your goal. But yep. um, it's it's important to be persistent. I think the the HR director, he knew my uh, phone number. Like, just in, my phone number was in his head. That's how many times I called him. Oh, my and goodness. And he would, yeah, he would say, Eugenia, I'll call you tomorrow at 3 o'clock. So at 3 o'clock, he's not calling me. So what do I do? I show up at the NTS center, and I say, you said you will call me at 3 o'clock. And you didn't, <laughs> so I'm here. I love the tenacity. I do, too. But I also love the humility, uh, really the intelligence and the humility to say, look, I, I want to be involved. I have to prove myself. I have to cut my teeth somewhere. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be an usher. Reminds me one of the, what I believe one of the most uh, – talented resort general managers I've ever met, almost a similar scenario, wanted to get into the industry, of course, wanted to get in management, ultimately came in as a server in the dining room. Uh, Just, I'll take anything I can get to get in. And sure enough, made it to the top. My story is not too dissimilar. I started pushing a broom in a lumber yard part time, uh, 20 hours a week for minimum wage. And within 15 years, I was the CEO. I mean, it's just not a right a normal track, but it is that starting at the bottom or starting at that entry level where you just find your place. Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk. Absolutely. About- and that's the thing, willingness, right? Willingness to, to get in there and, and put uh, your all just to prove, uh, prove yourself that I uh, hate, I'm here and I can do that. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, let's spend some time talking about EG event productions. Okay. And, mm-hmm. I took a look at the website. Beautiful website. Uh, very easy. Thank to, you. Very easy to navigate. Great user interface. I see three things that stand out so far as, as what I feel are are the products and services that you're offering. And I saw leadership and client travel, staff and client mm-hmm. app, staff and client appreciation, and meetings and conferences. Is mm-hmm. is that accurate? That is accurate. Yes. Well, let's spend a little time on each one of those. So leadership and client travel. Now, your passion is really making events memorable. So whatever it is you're involved with, I'm assuming that you're trying to find some way to make it memorable. Correct. Yeah. And not only memorable, uh, for me, again, my um, main goal as well to make it unique, to make it different, uh, because I want people again to be excited and to remember that experience, right. you know, and uh, coming to travel, uh, uh, taking your top 10 clients or top 10 uh, employees somewhere outside of Vancouver. It's a fantastic experience because uh, for me, it's all about hidden gems. I love supporting hidden gems, not only in Vancouver, but as well in other cities because Coming to a city, like everybody knows certain restaurants, everybody knows a certain venue uh, where people do their events. Right. right. So I want to go away from that. I want to actually uh, go and search for those unique experiences and, and uh, the hidden, I want to support those hidden gems. Uh, like, for example, we have in Whistler here. So it's it's not really outside of British Columbia, but it is outside of Winnipeg, um, the heli skiing, right? Taking people on a hill on a helicopter, and the the situation. Once you see those corporate men, professional, playing in the snow like children, it's incredible, <laughs> right? It's absolutely incredible because they are just. It feels like they're like you know those ten year old boys and. Uh, it not only strengthens your uh, relationship, but it also uh, pulls away a little bit from that professional side. You know, right. when you come to uh, when you come to a meeting or a conference, everybody obviously is professional, but it's it's extremely serious. Where if you're there, it's it's once you get that serious aspect, once you push it a little bit to a side with with that experience, it it just the day just goes absolutely. Uh, um, more smoother and more comfortable. People are more comfortable with each right. other, and it's a completely different relationship, right? 
Um, same with uh, same with the horse riding, right? Uh, Got Adventures in Kimberley Alpine Resort. They do fantastic, fantastic tours uh, on uh, on horses where they uh, pick some trails and go through water, and they do as well some uh, fly fishing and golfing. And wow, how fantastic is that to take your your clients or your staff to those experiences? Because guess what? Those people are gonna come back back home and say, oh, my God, guess what I did today with with uh, this client or right. uh, whoever that was right with my boss. It's word of mouth, word of mouth travel, travels, right? And what you're doing is, number one, not only you left your clients or staff with that experience, but your company, your brand travels with the word of mouth, right? So, and that is what I'm trying to kind of incorporate into, uh, well, that's my main goal for my business is to create those unique experiences. Same with um, the galas and, and the staff appreciation. I, I truly feel that um, not enough companies are doing that for their employees. And it doesn't have to be uh, necessarily really expensive. There, As I mentioned, there's really fantastic hidden gems where you can bring that experience to uh, to your staff, right, and, and where they enjoy themselves and as well uh, create that memory for them. Guess what? They're going to come back to the office the next day, and they're going to work harder for you because they see that appreciation and they feel it. Well, okay. <clears throat> this is where I want to stop you. So you're, you're really highlighting these hole-in-the-wall, off-the-beaten-path type experiences. And your client, you know, you're – they're coming to you saying, I, I have staff members that I want to appreciate. To me, that is looking back. That is saying, Kelly Fox, you have performed for me so well this year that I want to show you that I appreciate you. But what is really happening is because Eugenia is just knocking it out of the park. This appreciation event where I'm recognizing you for what you've done in the past, to her point, which I could not agree more, you come back the next day fired up ready to go so mm-hmm. now i just got another good year of work out of you kelly <laughs> i need to send you up to Absolutely. see eugenia <laughs> can you can you take kelly up there and show him around a little so i can get some good work out of him this next year <laughs> coming <laughs> out kelly <laughs> awesome it, we, we you mentioned the helicopters and the horses and we pulled the slides up for our viewers and in doing research for the show i uh, saw the helicopter photo and uh, quick story um uh, Part of me says I could do that. I could jump out of the helicopter and grab a snowboard and hit that fresh powder. And the other part of me, the the reality says, eh. uh, Eugenia, to let you know, I'm a horrible snowboarder. In reality, in my mind, I am incredibly talented. <laughs> okay, in my mind, I am a professional. So here we are locally with this winter storm, and I look over at my wife and I say, I think there's enough snow on the street that I can pull the snowboard out. She says, no it's going to go down to concrete. So I took the board out, I put it down, I stood on it, I said, no, look, it only goes down a little. Well, I was wrong. Uh, (laughs) I start snowboarding down the hill, and I hit an ice spot, and I wiped out, okay? I I wiped out pretty hard, and I I hit pavement. So I'm 43, and they always tell you all of the injuries and everything you do to yourself as a youth, is you're going to pay for it, right? Well, I woke up this morning, and what happened? It feels like I've been in an accident. Oh, that's right. I was u- researching Eugenia's show, saw the helicopter and the snowboard, took my snowboard outside, wiped out on the street. <laughs> Eugenia, it's your fault. It is all your fault. You know what, Terry? If I would have been there to hold your hand, that would have not happened. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, listen, I, I've got a question for you. So I told you uh, during our pre-interview, I spent quite a bit of time in hospitality. And one thing that amazed me, uh, and I'll give one specific example. And Kelly, i really like to hear what you have to say about this as well. So 600-acre resort, championship golf course, I don't know, 18,000 square foot conference center. So it's really a, a conference golf resort, but it was also on one of the largest lakes in Texas. And that says a lot, right? And so people are, are so excited to come for those uh, activities. And there were other activities. But we put a fire pit on this terrace overlooking the lake. 
uh, put a telescope out mm. there. And what we would notice is guests would gravitate towards a fire pit. They would, you know, have dinner, have their cocktail, walk over, have a seat. On the follow-up with all of our clients, and a lot of them were business clients, they would speak about the experience at that fire pit as being so meaningful, especially from a bonding perspective and really breaking down the silos from different departments. So a company comes and there's four different departments that come. Naturally, they congregate together. But there is something about the fire pit that pulled down those silos, became the most memorable mm -hmm. experience. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. But at the same token, mm -hmm. I couldn't include the fire pit as a main focus in my marketing for a golf, fishing, conference center resort. Eugenia, here's the question. And Kelly may have some comments or a better way to ask the question. When you're trying to create and sell unique, memorable experiences, there's a lot of feel to that, okay? Mm -hmm. What challenges do you see in marketing that feel? I, I'm not sure if I can really say it's a challenge. It's, okay. it's my job to come to the client and say, um, for example, Carrie, um, after I studied your your uh, clientele or your demographic as an event is an event producer planner, it's it's extremely important to understand uh, your client demographic and what they are trying to accomplish with this event. So what I'm hearing is right? is not this mass blanket marketing approach, but very tailored right from the get go. Correct, correct, because. Um, a certain certain demographic might not enjoy certain experience, right? Where right. perhaps other other demographic will. So once you once you had a chance to talk to your client and really understand um, uh, who's coming to this event, what are you trying to accomplish? Uh, what are you trying for the uh, for your uh, uh, customers? What are you trying for them to take away from that? So once you understand that, that's when you. Uh, start searching for certain uh, for certain um, entertainment Got or it. or like I said uh, hidden gems where you can come and say okay Carrie those are the things I feel uh, it will serve well uh, to your to your demographic and of course explain why why um, right. because it's convenient because those are the emotions it will get out because right. this location allows your customers to mingle and really relax and, and communicate and, you know, or network or whatever, whatever that is. It's once you sell that because um, when you come to a client, not everybody necessarily understands the vision of an event planner. Right. Event planner, they see a little bit beyond, right? And they're like, okay, like, how can I accomplish that? So once you have, like, a few spots, you understand what it will get out of people, right? Once you learn again your demographic, but once you come to your client and you you express that to them and you share that excitement, um, it's 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 quite easy for them to buy in on that because they're like, yeah, you're right, it's different, you know, it is different, and yeah, fantastic. So it's it's not really uh, a challenge; it's just how you present it, right. how you present it. That's that's a big big um, um, uh, part part in it when you present uh, opportunity. Well, Eugenia, I cannot express enough how much we appreciate your taking some time to join us today. Uh, I tell you what. My pleasure, Carrie. I, I'm, Kelly. I'm going to go to egeventproductions.com, save it as a favorite. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I, Thanks, Carrie. I, I saw wine on the water as a recent event. I was sipping wine when I was researching the <laughs> event, so I felt like I was there with them. <laughs> Uh, good, now, now, granted, good. they the 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 people in the photo were dressed up as they should be, uh, and I was in my pajamas. But my wine, uh, to me, it tasted just as good. Uh, Absolutely. So I, I really, <laughs> you know, at at the end of the day, you're in one of these businesses that I get excited to follow just to see what in the world you're doing. You know, keep it up. You're doing such a great job. Uh, anything Thank in closing? You so much, Carrie. Anything you would like to to share with our listeners and our viewers? Yeah, the only the only thing uh, I I would like again to say to uh, the listeners, if you if you have that 
fear of something you're really passionate about, go for it. Go for it. Put that fear aside. Go for it because, again, good things will come to you. Uh, there is You cannot accomplish anything in life without risking sometimes. So go for it and you will uh, you will get much, much more out of it than sitting there and wondering. You know, we may have to use go for it in the title. Yeah. Just, yep. yeah, Eugenia, Russia, German, Canada, event productions. Uh, what, what are you naming this? Go for it. Yeah. Just go for it. Right? <laughs> That's no fear. Absolutely. No fear. Go for it. That's what we took away. <laughs> Eugenia, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, stay in touch and look forward to talking again and following your journey. Thank you so much, Kerry. Uh, Kelly, it was a pleasure uh, meeting you as well. And I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day. And again, thank you so much for the invite. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow. Just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say it. You just finished an acquisition. Once you get through and you have to appreciate your staff, yep. you need to call Eugenia. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to find a way, You're you know, for the, the, the transition team, for everybody that made it worthwhile, uh, the memorable experience there, I think there's something to that. And that's, uh, it's not just about the user experience in the store, although that's super important. It's the user experience with the staff is really what I'm sensing in this that could be so valuable to me right. or to my organization as a way to, hey, thanks, here it is. We're going to do something awesome. Well, I'll tell you, I, I, when I look out in the landscape, I am so excited that user experience is taking the center stage across numerous industries, whether you're Eugenia and you're, you're hosting events or putting together events or you're you know, in a resort environment or whether you're in a bank. Yeah. Anywhere you go, user experience is beginning to really take the front and center, and it should have been there the entire time but I'm not going to complain that we're here now. Yeah, let's just take it. All right, Kelly, thanks for coming with us, and uh, good luck. Oh, Be safe you. out there in the weather. Don't go snowboarding. I'm going to try not to. All right. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Viewers, listeners, thank you for joining another episode of KMB Talk. Take care. Thank you for listening to KMB Talk. You don't have to click home, but you can't stay here. Mm-hmm.